Hi, it's The Wire. April 7th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com. Also, keepingitfree.blogspot.com. Let's talk about a very interesting fight if you're in a fight styles. Diego Pacheco surviving Sean McCallman. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now I thought this fight had the possibility of a coup. Right? I lost on this fight, but I did make a pre-fight video for members here online where I advised members to bet on the underdog, Sean McCalman, right? And uh, the hedge was Diego Pacheco, who came into this fight on an eight knockout streak. He has one of the better punches in boxing. The hedge was Pacheco by stoppage. Instead, what we got was a fight that went the distance. If you look at the odds, that's surprising, right? The fight went the distance. Pacheco wins a unanimous decision. But let me make a few points here. And it's really something we all need to think about because this fight took place at 168 pounds. Understand, 168 is unsettled. Right? David Benavides has moved on 175, folks. I don't think he ever comes back to 168. I'm not sure how much longer Canelo is going to be in the sport of boxing. He's already a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's fighting Jaime Munguia. Uh, let's just say if he beats Munguia, I can see him having one more big fight. Maybe Terrence Crawford. Maybe the guy I'd love to see him in against. Uh, Janabek. Right? Understand. The water is dangerous. Jean Beck, of course, would be coming up from 160 if that fight were to take place. But just understand that you have a changing of the guard at 168. Right? Callum Smith fought Viterbiev at 175. Billy Joe Saunders is talking about coming back, but Billy Joe Saunders is one of these pretty boys who's now in his 30s. Right? If your game relies on timing, making the other guy miss, things like that, as you age, age might not be good to you. Right, Older punchers have an advantage over older guys who make you miss. Right, So just understand, 168 is a little bit nebulous right now. I wouldn't be surprised if some of the guys at 160 don't just jump up to 168 for sport. Right? Hamza Shiraz has the size, certainly has the jab to compete at 168. Well, just to understand, Diego Pacheco is making his mark here. Pacheco is interesting because he's a tall fighter who, and this is just the lay of the land these days, has his feet too wide apart, in my opinion. Right? Gives up his height a bit. Here he comes in with a four-inch uh, height advantage. Let's just say, if he were Larry Holmes, and he had this height advantage and this jab, he would figure out how to make that jab mobile. He would be moving on the outside, bludgeoning you. You would have to get by the jab and the movement to even make the fight a fight. Here, Diego Pacheco sets up shop outside, but again, doesn't dance. Doesn't lean back. This guy, you know, I've seen fights where Pacheco does lean back, but if he doesn't have to, he's not going to. Right, the Jack Colque fight. Colque himself is a taller guy. You'll notice Diego Pacheco's outside, shooting a jab, leaning back. Right here against a shorter man, he's leaning forward. 
Now the catch here is that McCalman, who has sparred with Berlanga, who has sparred with Kovalev, right? McCalman, who himself was a football player, is ambidextrous and is defensively blessed. Folks, he's very hard to find in the ring. He's the guy who has figured out that if he doesn't overextend himself, if he doesn't leave himself open for counters, and the way he doesn't is by having negative energy, right? Not throwing a lot of punches, staying outside, dodging your shots, coming in with some leaping shots. He has an excellent leaping left hook. We didn't see it enough in this fight. But he has figured out that with lower volume, he can actually be a better defensive fighter. He can have sluggers, even a slugger like Pacheco with eight consecutive KOs. He can have sluggers frustrated. He can make them miss, he can counter, he can stay outside. He can go several rounds in the fight. Some of these sluggers are not made to go the distance. But this fight had a wow moment, and it's a wow moment. Diego Pacheco, who likes to be outside, was struggling the first half of the fight. At one point, one of the guys on the telecast had McCalman up three rounds to one. The underdog, and he was a huge underdog, a bigger than seven to one underdog was actually systematically beating the favorite, the, what I call, A-level prospect, right, in the early part of the fight. So, taking a page out of Tyson Fury against Derek Chisora, the big man here, Diego Pacheco, goes from being, <laughs> goes from being an A-level prospect to an A-plus level prospect. He's fighting a guy who's defensively blessed. Pacheco then decides to find out if the guy is defensively blessed. If he steps into the pocket, completely gives up his height. And decides to go shoulder to shoulder in the pocket against McCalman. Now what we found out is Pacheco is excellent inside. Right, this is the guy who's leaning on you and then is throwing uppercuts from in close. You don't want to back away because Pacheco has power. You don't want him to be able to extend his arms. And you notice that Pacheco knows how to handle his reach. But he had a co-conspirator here. We found out that McCalman gets neutralized when you get deep in the pocket against him. In other words, one way to deal with a guy's superior athleticism and ambidexterity is to crowd him, right? Pacheco comes in, is throwing a lot of right hands, heavy on the power shots. Pacheco has an excellent jab. He showed us here he can fight without it when he needs to be rough and tumble. He pulls away from McCalman in the second half of the fight. And it was interesting because to see a big man give up his reach, give up his height, give up his excellent jab, and to come in the pocket and roughhouse with the confidence that he was not leaving himself open. That even though he was bigger, he had his head tucked in such a way that he couldn't be hit with McCalman counters was jarring. Right? Pacheco lives for another day. Gamblers like me who thought we had a coup on our hands, especially after the early part of this fight, truth be known, I didn't see the fight until after the fight took place. I was tied up with something called the Final Four yesterday, right? 
let's just say that um, I was impressed by both guys. McCalman is an upset waiting to happen. He's going to fight some fighter who is going to stay outside and is going to be dealing with McCalman's superior athleticism and superior defense, right? Judges are going to be challenged to give McCallum the decision, right? McCallman, though, does need to figure out what his A-level punches are, and he needs to take more chances, right? Sergio Mora does a great job on the telecast, simply a great job. And he calls McCallman a quiet fighter. In other words, McCallman is so into negative energy that he's not doing a lot of feints to create openings for him to be the aggressor. It cost him here. He's facing a A-plus level prospect who is even better than advertised. It was a tough fight. I thought the scoring was a bit too wide. I thought this fight was much closer. I did think Pacheco did enough to win the fight. Folks, if you're looking at 168 pounds, and if you're wondering about the guys at the weight class who are in their 20s, you need to consider Diego Pacheco. Let me also say, too, that... Demetrius Andre, who has a lot of feints, right, decided he was going to lose weight after his loss to Benavides. Now that Benavides is outside of the division, Andre has a chance, in my opinion, to put himself back in the mix at 168. Let me point out that 120 is difficult because of the southpaws at one, excuse me, 160 is difficult because of the southpaws at 160, right? Andre, who himself is a southpaw, in my opinion, would do better against righties at 168 than he would 160, right? To get an idea of what I'm talking about, John Abeck is a southpaw, Arislandi Lara is a southpaw, Hamza Shiraz is actually a southpaw fighting inverted. Right? If you're in your mid-30s and you're a southpaw, I'd rather take my chances at 168 than at 160. Right? Benavides, I don't care what's said in the press. Uh, Benavides looked weight-drained to me at 168. I'm assuming Benavides is going to stick around 175, if not go higher in weight, right? Because Benavides used to spar against Zerdo Ramirez. Just food for thought. Right now that Benavides has left the division, now that Canelo is at an age where, let's face it, he can't make the fans happy. Right, you're winning, fans are going to come up with some excuse to criticize you. It's oh, he's avoiding Benavides. Right now, you have guys from way outside the weight class, Terrence Crawford, saying, Hey, I want Canelo. Right? Fans are saying, hey, Canelo, when are you going to fight real competition? This is as Canelo's next opponent has over 40 wins and is unbeaten. Right? So when a boxer reaches that stage of his career where he can't make everyone happy, whatever he does. And let's be clear here. <laughs> Canelo has done more than at least 95% of the sport. Right? Um, when a fighter isn't being appreciated even though he's a living legend. That's the time to plan your exit, right? Marvin Hagler was younger than Canelo is now when he walked away from the sport of boxing, right? A fighter like Canelo doesn't need to fight Golovkin and then hear, hey, Canelo was fading in that fight, right? What about the first part of the fight? <laughs> what about the W Canelo got for that fight? Right now, I'll concede, Canelo is no longer prime Canelo. We noticed that from the Ryder fight, right? Ryder, of course, has to get off the canvas 
to, you know, hang out and get to the later part of that fight to show us that Canelo wasn't as fresh as Canelo has been in some other fights. Okay, fair enough. But just to understand, 168 is opening up now. Guys who have left 168, like Demetrius Andre, need to reconsider that decision. Might want a round trip back to the division. Right? At 168, as it's presently constituted, Diego Pacheco is a major threat to the throne. Let's go one step further, too. Sean McCalman, for a fighter who can't fight inside and isn't prepared to throw the number of punches, be as active as Diego Pacheco was here. He's also in contention in the division. Right? This was a swing and a miss by me. Oh, to think, to think that we got the odds we got and that the fight started the way it did, only to have it slip away because, <laughs> because the favorite actually has more skills than we realized is disappointing. Um, I tip my hat to Diego Pacheco. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.